Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I wanna welcome you to today's video where we're gonna cover the topic of what I consider to be the nine worst health habits that most people do every single day. And I think it's important to look at habits because when we hear this word habits, many people think these are good things I wanna develop. I wanna develop good habits. Well, the fact is that habits are just these automatic behaviors that we do every single day, and we can have habits that are actually having negative impacts on our health. And I wanna cover these, particularly not like the worst habits, like doing hardcore drugs every single morning will be a worse habit than these, but these are very, very common habits that many people do do. So let's get into today's video, and I think you're really gonna enjoy this. Welcome to the Fit Father Project, the number one health and weight loss program for busy men over 40. All right, so the first very common bad health habit that many people do is missing morning rehydration. And I'm such an advocate of this, and I talk about it in many of our videos because it's that important. People need to start drinking more water first thing in the morning. And in fact, I recommend you get 20 to 32 ounces within an hour of waking up because you've heard the stats, your body is 70% water and you could go potentially weeks if not months without food. You can only survive three to seven days without water because water is making up all your cells. The blood and the plasma that's carrying your blood cells is largely made up of water. And when we drink water in the morning, it's key because we're rehydrating after a period of dehydration while we sleep. When you do get into the habit of drinking more water first thing in the morning, one thing you're gonna experience is an increase in energy. You may find that you get an easier bowel movement in the morning. You may find that you're less hungry throughout the day, especially as you drink water. And the times I recommend you do drink water is in between meals, not right after a meal, because after you've eaten a meal, the digestive process is happening. You don't wanna drink a ton of water to dilute those digestive enzymes. Wait a little bit until food's cleared out of your system a little bit, have water in between meals. So morning, in between a meal in between a meal and then taper in the evening. Morning rehydration and people missing that is one of the worst things, especially when you then go tack on drinking dehydrating beverages first thing in the morning, something like coffee like that without water can be problematic. Second worst health habit is snacking too much and spiking your blood sugar. So this is something that's really interesting because I think if you looked at the common nutrition advice, maybe even 10 years ago, it was the idea that you wanna have a lot of small frequent meals eat something every two hours. And although it does work for some people, it's actually probably not most optimal for most people. Because here's the fact, every time you do eat, you're introducing food into the body and the body has a response. Your pancreas secretes all these digestive enzymes that starts breaking down the food. And as those foods absorbed, and let's say sugars and proteins and fats are coming in, your body releases hormones like insulin to start to stabilize and clear out the blood sugar. And this is a normal, beautiful, natural process that keeps us alive. But the problem is when you snack too frequently, you're constantly spiking this process and you're constantly carrying strain on your blood sugar. And what happens is what we want is to have a nice healthy meal, blood sugar elevates, stabilizes, slowly declines, and we have another meal. But if you're snacking all the time, you're doing this to the body. You're constantly introducing digestive stress. You're potentially destabilizing your blood sugar. And what we've also found too, from the research is people who snack more frequently end up eating more calories. And it's no surprise. You had, let's say you had a nice big meal of 700 calories that keeps you full for four hours. That's a lot better than if you were eating two 300 calorie things every hour and a half to two hours, you're gonna end up eating more calories. And the more frequently you eat, it actually trains your brain to release this hormone, a hunger hormone called ghrelin. And so you get hungrier more often. This is also why when many people start practicing something like intermittent fasting, where they go longer stretches, maybe like 12, 14 hour fast, and they shift back breakfast or just eat a little less frequently. At first it's hard, but over time the body adapts and you get benefits to that as well. So snacking too often is a problem, especially if you want health and weight loss. What I recommend is two simple meal timing schedule setups that works great for some people, is if you wanna have breakfast, have some breakfast somewhere between six and eight. Have lunch sometime around noon. So it's around a four hour or so, four to five hour gap a snack or an afternoon mini meal sometime around three and dinner around six. So eight, noon, three, six, something like that. What also works is some intermittent fasting. So you can do this in one of two ways or many ways, but here's two suggestions. One is maybe you just get up, you rehydrate, maybe you drink some coffee or some tea and you just push back that first meal. That meal doesn't come till like maybe 10, 11 or even noon. So you fast in the morning, you might have a snack around three, dinner around six, great plan. What you can also do is have breakfast at eight, you know, lunch at noon, and maybe you have a lighter meal, like a snack around three, and then you start fasting for the rest of the day. And this kind of brings into the next health habit I wanna talk about that's a big mistake that many people make, and that's eating too late at night. 
Late night eating, we're finding out from the modern research, is actually more damaging than we once thought. The old thinking was that, oh, it really just matters how many calories you're intaking during the day, and there's no effect to when you take those in, and it's okay to eat a ton at night. Well, now that we're learning more about circadian biology, the fact that our bodies run on these clocks, and our bodies actually prefer to be eating during the time when there's more light outside because it's more synced up with our active rhythm. And then at night, what we don't wanna do is overtax the digestive system with a big meal, particularly late at night. What our bodies wanna do is have that dinner, maybe sometime around sundown, and then do more rest and digest. And look, I'm not saying that there's not gonna be a time where you have a big meal or even something like a cheat meal or a free meal around 9, 10 o'clock at night. But if you're consisting eating too late at night, again, you're spiking your blood sugar unnecessarily. You're actually eating at a time where your body wants to rest and digest and not have more food stress. And they've also found that eating too much late at night disrupts your sleep. You don't get as much deep sleep. It can actually make uh, you have more dreams and chaotic mind stuff because the body's more active. Because when we do eat as well, our, core, our temperature increases. Like food has a thermic effect. We actually measure calories as a unit of heat. And at night, we actually want our core temperature to cool down. So another reason why when you eat too much, it can make your body hotter at night. And I don't know if you've experienced this. I certainly have. Let's say you eat a lot of like protein or a really heavy meal before bed, and then you have like sweats at night or something like that. It's because this is too much digestive stress and you don't, we don't want to do that late at night. The next habit I have is really a, a dovetail off that last one is not prioritizing sleep. And I think a lot of people uh, don't realize the critical importance of sleep. When we're looking at improving health and wellness, we want to start at like the highest order things. And one of the highest order things in our bodies is the fact that all of our hormones run on the circadian rhythm. And when we sleep, everything works way better than if we don't. When you miss a night of sleep, here's a couple things that happen in your body. One, your brain experiences more inflammation. At night, one of the great and amazing things that happens during sleep is you're actually, you're clearing out uh, all sorts of like metabolic debris from all the amazing activity that's happening. There's these things called microglial cells around your nerves that help basically like clean your brain. It's called the glymphatic system. So your, your brain is improving. It's not surprising when we miss sleep, we have brain fog. What also happens is your body becomes more insulin resistant and has higher blood sugars the next day and your actually body processes carbs worse after a night of bad sleep. So if you ate carbs after a night of good sleep, you might have a nice gradual blood sugar response, but when you're more insulin resistant and you eat carbs after a night of bad sleep, let alone if you're also throwing a lot of stimulants in the picture too, it can totally black, uh, jack up your blood sugar levels, will negatively impact your fat burning ability, and increases your hunger hormone ghrelin, so you end up eating more calories. So I'm thinking about this. It's like, if I'm gonna give anyone health advice, it's like, let's fix like the root cause things here. So if we work on improving your sleep, your whole metabolism functions way better. And I've mentioned this several times in past videos. They've do, do, done weight loss studies. They take two, two groups of people. One group sleeps well, one group doesn't. They eat the same calories. The group that misses sleep, they lose more muscle mass, they don't lose as much weight, and they feel like crap. Sleep well, improve your health, prioritize sleep. It is more important, I would say, to fix your sleep than it would be to add in intense workouts. If I had to pick one, I would be nutrition, good sleep, hydration. And then once you're in a good routine, you can add in some more intense exercise. In fact, if you're already stressed out, not sleeping well, and now you're trying to do extra intense exercise on top, you're not gonna be able to sustain that. You're gonna burn out, it's gonna tax your nervous system, not good. Now, the next health habit that a lot of people do that's very damaging is prolonged sitting. Today, we are sitting much longer than ever. A lot of us are working on computers or we have more sedentary jobs and we can sit for some time, but what the research shows is that when you sit for a prolonged period of time without getting up, it leads to tremendous damage on the body. First off, it causes a lot of compression on the back and many of us experience some degree of back pain, low back, upper back, those spinal, your spinal column and all the nerves that are coming out of uh, the spinal segments get compressed by prolonged sitting. What they've also found though is prolonged sitting seems to affect our body's ability to burn fat. When we sit for too long, it actually affects some of the enzymes like lipoprotein lipase that it affects our, our fat burning ability and you have decreased fat burning. What they've also found too is that even if you exercise, if you sit for six or more hours per day, it increases your risk of all-cause mortality. You're at a higher risk of dying if you sit more than six hours per day. And I actually did a podcast I'd say maybe it was around sometime last year with an expert who specializes in sitting and biomechanics. And the main takeaway point that I found really impactful was break up your sitting. 
So if you are sitting continuously every hour, get up, stretch out, move your body, walk around a little bit. It's the fact that when you sit for stretches and stretches and stretches, it's terrible. And we've maybe all felt this on a, like a road trip or a long drive. You get out of the car and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm just so stiff. Because when we're moving and we're getting up and giving intermittent movement, it really improves our, our whole functioning of the system. So prolonged sitting, you've heard it, it might be the new smoking. It's definitely damaging on your health. Break that sitting up, move around, accumulate some steps. Next health habit that many, uh, like a bad health habit that many people do is drinking too many sugary drinks. And I know this might seem obvious, but people are still doing these things. They're drinking sugary drinks. And the problem is there's a lot of hidden sugars in many drinks. And much like snacking, the problem with drinking sugary drinks is it jacks up your blood sugar and it doesn't keep you full at all. You could drink an entire like two liter bottle of, of Coca-Cola or something like that and still be hungry to have dinner because these sugars just spike our, our, our system and they don't give us any satiety. And I do recommend, and I say the healthiest people on the planet, basically drink things with very little to no sugar. They drink a lot of water, they drink certain teas, they drink black coffee. If you wanna spice up your water, you can squeeze some lemon or maybe some other kinds of little bits of fruit in, in there, or lemon, lime, or something like that. And it's fine also, there are health benefits to getting something like fresh press organic juice, which does have sugar in it, but that sugar is also coming along with a ton of very powerful phytochemicals and micronutrients that are very good for the body. That's different than eating, than drinking like processed drinks. And I also in this moment wanna talk about artificial sweeteners. So something like drinking Coke Zero or Mountain Dew Diet or something like that, or even some of these healthy drinks that have artificial sweeteners, what we're finding from the research is a lot of these artificial sweeteners, they do negatively impact your gut microbiome, the healthy bacteria that line your entire digestive tract, and these guys are so important for your metabolism, for your immune function, for your brain function, and if you're jacking them up with artificial sweeteners, definitely not good. And what artificial sweeteners also do is because they're so excessively sweet, they train your brain actually to like, to downregulate the level of sweetness that you're used to. So it's like you're constantly blaring music at level 80. When you go to have something natural that might have some sugar in it, like a piece of fruit, it doesn't taste as sweet because you've been all the way up here. So there's a reset period. And I recommend if you're trying to lose weight, you get off the sugary drinks, you get off all the sodas and the artificial sweetener stuff. It will give maybe one to two weeks for your taste receptors to reset. And you're gonna find that you have a much different palate than when you're drinking sugary drinks. Next bad health habit that many people do is they rely too much on caffeine for energy. And I know in the United States, certainly here, is coffee is a big part of many people's lives. And I think the research is pretty clear that coffee can be a part uh, of a healthy life. And, you, and there are, in fact, some benefits to caffeine um, in, in coffee in general, like whole coffee, like increased exercise performance at certain doses. It actually can promote brain health in certain instances. And you can have some coffee. But the problem is when people rely on it constantly, because one of coffee's main mechanisms of action, besides activating the sympathetic fight or flight nervous system, which gives you that boost of energy, a little bit of heat, faster heart rate, higher blood pressure, is it also blocks a chemical in the brain called adenosine. Adenosine is something that's produced when ATP is used in metabolism, and it actually is one of the brain's ways of sensing that it's tired. Well, coffee and caffeine blocks adenosine receptors and prevents the brain from sensing its tiredness. So it's kind of jacking you up a little bit, but it's also masking the fact that your body is actually tired. So it's kind of like borrowed energy in a sense. And I'm okay with you having a little bit of coffee, but if you're constantly in the state where you're not sleeping well and you need to have coffee to feel energetic, then I think it's time to actually do a little bit of a reset. Get off the coffee or caffeine for some time or certainly scale it back, work on improving your sleep and get to the state where coffee and caffeine ends up being a tool in your life, not a reliance. Because when things become reliant and we need them to prop up our nervous system to function, that's when we're going down a path where we're gonna have health consequences down the road. The next health, bad health habit that many people have is not addressing stress in a very deliberate way every single day. Stress is gonna be one of the main killers of people um, pretty much for the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. We're not getting any less busy. And what happens is the stress puts our, our bodies into that same sympathetic fight or flight nervous system as when we have coffee. And when we're in that sympathetic overdrive system, what it does is actually decreases our immune function because the body's like, I'm dealing with a very acute stress. I don't need to think about more long-term problems. So your immune system is depressed, which makes you more susceptible, especially as you age to all forms of cancers viruses, infections, all things like that. 
When you're stressed as well, your heart is working so much harder. Heart is pumping harder and faster. There's more um, basically restriction in those blood vessels, key blood vessels, which over time, coupled with an inflammatory diet can lead to the buildup of arterial plaque, heart disease, strokes, all these kinds of things. Stress also impacts your blood sugar levels dramatically, as we've talked about in different segments of this video. So we need to all have a very direct way to address stress. And the best ways that I find are things like prayer, meditation, walking outside, exercise, nice time with family and friends. And I think what one, one thing that I suggest you do do, if you don't have built in every single day ways to, to de-stress, and also using maybe some journaling and some self-reflection and examination to look at your constant thinking patterns and see where uh, there's like a relationship to what you're doing that is maybe a little bit unhealthy, your health will improve when you start to address stress. And the people who are gonna live the longest over the next 50 to 100 years are people who can keep their bodies in a more relaxed, peaceful state. If that does not describe you right now, this is probably your biggest area of health optimization. And finally, I'll say the last uh, worst health habit that many people do is drinking alcohol more than one to two times per week. Again, like coffee, alcohol can be a part of your life in moderation. For some people, of course, your family history, how it rolls for you. But look, it's not gonna make or break your health if you enjoy a couple beers or a couple glasses of wine one to two times per week. But I'll tell you this, when you get to the point where alcohol is becoming your uh, pressure release valve late at night, you're starting to have a glass of wine with every dinner or a beer with every dinner, and that becomes very frequent and a part of your life, it's gonna jack up your metabolism, mess up your sleep, create a dependency in your life that you're eventually gonna to have to address later on. And we see this with our Fit Father and Fit Mother members. When they cut down on alcohol, they immediately start to lose weight. And this is because of the metabolic effects of alcohol in conjunction with food, but also with the fact that everything we said is like enjoyed in moderation, fine, but when things become too frequent, it is a problem. And I totally understand why we fall into these habits and traps. And I've been there many times in my life personally in stressful periods. We're looking for things to escape. We're looking for things to make us feel connected and good. And I'm suggesting that if we do need these things, which we absolutely do, that you find healthier outlets that are a little bit better. Start to take a walk at night. Start to read, pray, meditate, journal, and maybe even use some natural supplements that can help with stress tremendously. Things like L-theanine that's found in green tea. You can get it without the caffeine, just L-theanine relaxes the mind at night. Chamomile and, and lavender are amazing herbal teas that can help relax you as well. And there's also some other great herbs that are alternatives to alcohol, like kava is an herb that's becoming more popular and thrown in a lot of different kinds of drinks. Um, the plant is actually called Piper Methysticum. It's called kava and it can relax you for some people. So there are other options beside alcohol. And if this is a part of your life that you need to double down on, I know it's gonna improve your health. So these are common things. These are things that we're either doing or our family members are doing. And I want you to really reflect throughout this video. And now that we've kind of gone through it, which one of these areas do you want to focus on improving? Pick one or two areas max and nail it this week. Make it a challenge to add more awareness to improving this one area and see and evaluate where you have some health habits because all change starts with awareness. We become aware of our potentially unconscious habits and patterns. And then we can actually use the power of the mind and the power of the heart in terms of why, why we're doing these things, the connection to make changes. And you make these changes and you switch these things from unhealthy habits to healthy habits. And now you're going to be stacking up health. You're going to be investing in yourself. And the prize that you get at the end of this is more energy, more time with your family and friends and a longer, happier life. Hope you found this valuable, my friend. If you like this stuff and you're not subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscription button. We literally have 500 plus videos all over our channels with workouts, nutrition advice, exercise demonstrations, more like philosophy videos like this. I know you're gonna absolutely love it and you'll be able to get notified straight to your YouTube feed when we publish new videos. And also hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And if you have topic requests for future videos, I'd love to hear from you. So you can comment below in the, the comment section and I'd love to hear your topics and we'll shoot those videos in the upcoming segments. Thanks for being here, my friend.